Hello and welcome to the September NMSS Reassembly Tournament. So we have enough submissions, we're going to have the one Neophyte pool, which you're seeing now, and four conventional pools. So let's go ahead and get these started. All of these are being Neophyte pool qualifiers, our first or second time participants. Uh, in which case, or, uh, more to the point though, Zfall and Imperiax are showing up in the NMSS arena for the first time. So let's get this started. So up first we have Super Busy up against Zfall 99. Now with Super Busy, he actually has a... Each of his ships is uniquely designed and each of them is kind of built around a specific weapon. Like this one uh, is more or less flak oriented. This one's got its central plasma cannon. This one's got the proton sword. This one you can see is missiles. And this one over here is centered around uh, plasma projectors. Uh, on the other side of the stick, or on the other side of the field, we have Exocets and a stick, which is a farmer fleet. Um, it's got a whole bunch of these little guys, which are the Exocets, and this is the stick. Uh, and of course, the stick is what's called a spacer. Its whole job is to cause the fleet to spread out, so you're not going to be as likely to run into each other. If you look at how Super Busy's fleet is clustered compared to how Z Falls is clustered, that's what this, the, the spacer does. But moving along, you can see the, the farmer missiles have always been one of their better weapons. In fact, the only time the farmers have made it out of the uh, an open faction sub pool was because of the farmer missiles. But Super Busy off to a pretty strong start. Z Fall has the point lead, but Super Busy has kills. And if you don't kill a ship, it can regenerate, and the regenerated parts won't award any additional points. However, the they do still have full effect otherwise. But now we're seeing Z-Fall take a kill. The, the bug's biggest drawback is their overall thinness. They're very detailed and they look fantastic, but most of their segments are connected by one or two relatively small pieces so a good explosive hit is going to take out a large chunk of them and can render them inoperable for a while because they they don't have the the interlaced sort of pattern it takes them longer to regenerate than it would otherwise that said that plasma ship if it gets a hold of things um, the the fleet from zfall is all farmer and farmers don't generally do well under fire. However, it does appear that Z-Fall is going to be taking round one. Be because the fleet cap in this one is only 2000p, um, it, it kind of helps mitigate some of the fragility of the farmers at least, because it's a lot easier to survive 2000p worth of firepower than 16000p. Yeah, I guess I kind of dropped the ball. There's actually two different types of Vexta sets. Uh, if you look, you can see the thumbnail has a single missile launcher, but on the left side of the screen, you can see they have dual missile launchers. The, the farmers have a few different tiers of launcher. The, they've got the useless tier, the MM1, and the HM1. The MM1 is the dual mount point rocket launcher. The HM1 is the single mount point. And yeah, the, the ships from Z-Fall are actually rather well done, especially considering Farmer. And Z-Fall takes round one. Yeah, unfortunately, the Plasma Projector ship seems to be having a hard time. The, the AI is not very good with Plasma Projectors to begin with combined with the fact that it seems to be particularly rush happy is lending it to getting alpha pretty hard by the missiles. And yeah, the, the extra sets look like miniature dragonflies. Which the dragonfly was originally a farmer design anyway, so miniature dragonfly is particularly appreciated.
And this round actually remarkably close. There's only three extra sets left, and Super Busy still has three of his ships left. So the points are very close, but the actual combat potential on the field vastly favors Super Busy right now. But we'll see if we can capitalize on it. You can see the Terran missiles are considerably faster than Farmer missiles. Both rate of fire and uh, the actual movement speed. We were busy last three ships holding on very well though. You can see the main plasma cannon on the bottom left ship is already down, which is its only armament, I think. So that ship poses no threat right now, and the other ship seems to be having a very bad day. It does appear that default has a better than fair chance of taking this one. With it being two versus one now. You can see both the models of X to set on the right side of the screen. And Zephal takes the match. So next up, we have Super Busy up against Kanga. And Kanga is bringing a single ship fleet. Uh, this rather durable one. A lot of burst lasers. Uh, a little bit of other firepower from missiles and a torpedo. The, the drones I don't think will be too much of a factor, but uh, burst lasers against fragile ships generally do fairly well. And Congo's ship is remarkably fast itself. As you can see, it's just casually leaving everything behind. So it bled off some points, but did manage to survive, which I'm going to say is in Congo's favor. And you can see the proton sword, or the plasma projector sword, having a. Ah, Jesus. Words. Um, the plasma projector ship having a very bad day. In fact, I think it's dead now. And because Congo only has one ship, battles of attrition generally favor Congo. Because every ship Congo kills can't come back. But because Congo only has one ship, as long as that ship is alive, it can regenerate. You can see now it's slowly but surely picking them apart. The varying speeds of Super Busy's fleet allow them to be separated and taken apart individually. Uh, and the, so what we saw there, the Proton Sword ship, which was probably the only one that actually stood a fair chance of killing Kongos, got turned around, and because it only has forward thrust, it couldn't do anything. Uh, the AI could not figure out how to turn the ship itself around, which is one reason I always recommend having uh, thrusters in all four coordinates or all four directions, even if it's not much. If it's anything at all, it will eventually turn the ship around and you can use your good directions. But you should see. So you can see how the Proton Sword, all, almost all of its thrusters are aligned forward. It does have some reverse thrust actually, but it's dead center, meaning that the ship couldn't use it to turn. However, Super Busy does take round two. The power of the Proton Sword cannot be underestimated. And yeah, uh, Kanga is actually the admin of the Reassembly Discord. Got in on the ground floor.
And Kaga used to be a lot more busy in the community. Uh, even when the NMSS tournaments were just starting, uh, I had a submission from Kanga. This is actually Kanga's second submission, despite being like three years apart. And Kanga takes the match. So next up, we have Infamous Yenyu up against Super Busy. Now, Infamous Yenyu also brought a single ship fleet, but you can see he's instead opting for more torpedoes and a bit more stacking, but still has a bunch of burst lasers. However, unlike Kanga's single ship kiter fleet, it doesn't have much in the way of armor. It's instead relying on speed and keeping distance, but as you saw, Kanga's ship struggled with the idea of maintaining distance. Yenyu's ship may be better behaved, but uh, at the very least I hope for Yenyu's sake. And your ship is putting up pretty good points lead. The, the addition of the big pilot torpedoes is going to allow it to do some things like alpha smaller ships out of nowhere. But the fact that the path to the core is protected only by weapons and the shield means that any dead on frontal hit could be fatal. But Yenyu does take round one. And you can see Yenyu's ship does bring a considerable amount of firepower. The, the torpedo volleys in particular, I think, are really tipping the scales. You can see it shattered the front armor and then burst lasered the core very quickly, giving Yenyu the, the win. Now we have Imperiax, who's bringing a, uh, a container-based fleet. The... The bulk of the fleet, numerically, are these little guys, which just have a laser that I'm not even sure they'll be able to bring to effective use, but we'll see. Uh, then he's got these guys, which have, or this guy, which has a whole bunch of protein swords, and this has a couple of torpedoes on it. And we'll see how that fares. If the torpedo ship stays behind the, the meat wall, it should be fine. But, uh, yeah, picking up one kill pretty quickly. The torpedoes are have long been my favorite Terran weapon. They they offer a ton of damage and they're pretty inexpensive. The only problem is you run into situations like that where it just fires torpedoes past the target. So if you're going to use a torpedo fleet, you have to have some way of stalling for time, either via health or armor. In this case, Imperiax goes to go with the uh, armor way. And the plasma cannon's no slouch on damage, but human or but the Terran containers actually make rather solid armor. And Imperial Extinct Round 1. Generally speaking, one of the things that I say is that more than anything else, hit points wins battles. Which we can see pretty clearly in this one. I think the... Kind of the, the protein swords on the one ship for Imperiax do a lot of damage, but I didn't see it participating in much of the last fight. It snagged a kill in this one, but now you can see it's just kind of driving around. The bulk of the damage that Imperiax is dealing is coming from the, the torpedoes. And Super Busy is definitely bringing more damage to the field, but Imperiax is able to just outlast, see how long it's taking it to get anywhere. And Imperius takes the match. 
So now we have Z Fall up against Conga. I do think this is going to be very difficult for Z Fall's fleet to pull off. Conga's got missiles, burst lasers, speed, durability. Everything it really needs to deal with this fleet. You can see Conga's ship just dancing around, pretty casually taking apart the, the extra sets. Burst lasers are probably the best anti-kiter weapon in the game, simply because of the range and accuracy. And Kaga takes round one. Nice and clean. And Kanga takes the match. So now we have Z fall up against Yen Yu. Uh, given how the match with Kanga went, I imagine this one will go about the same, given the similarity between Yen Yu and Kanga's fleets. Although Yen Yu has all of his lasers on point defense, which is making them much better at shooting down missiles, but slowing his kill rate quite a bit. However, Yen Yu is also bringing more lasers overall. So I think he'll manage just fine. And Yen Yu takes round one. And Yin Yu takes the match. So now we have Z Fall up against Imperiax. As long as the Kiters don't disrespect, then I don't think Imperiax really has a chance. But whenever you say things like, as long as it doesn't disrespect, it generally does not fill me with a lot of hope. The AI has a really unfortunate tendency to disrespect things that are very close range. You can see the, the extra sets are sitting inside lange, laser range with the probes, despite having no business being there. I'm also fighting with a doggo. Sitting on my lap, being a monster. It's important if you have a, if you have a pet, just harass them constantly. Like whenever they're trying to sleep, just bug them. Uh, that way, whenever you're trying to sleep, they're too tired to do anything and they just go to sleep with you. Yeah, the reason the AI makes me think of the Warhammer 40k meme with the guy, uh, the commissar sitting at the top of the tank, driving me closer, I want to hit them with my sword.
Uh, all of the music is coming from a channel called the Audio Library, which posts exclusively copyright-free music. Um, this particular playlist is the Dance and Electronic playlist. I have no idea what's playing or what's next, though, really. And yeah, torpedoes are really strong. They're, they're supposed to be anti-large ship weapons, but if you use enough of them, they work against everything else, too. Oh, Gauss Beams are going to go from 450 to 72. That's awesome. I'm going to use a lot more of those. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Make your uh, see if you can make your your farmer circle thing that you had with the shotgun PD, except with Gauss instead. <laughs> and it does look like Imperiax is going to be taking around too as well. The the little kiters, if they focused, would easily be able to crack these things, but the AI likes to not do that. And also drive into the range of enemy weapons, despite having no business being there. I've never actually been able to read Starfix's spreadsheet. It's just kind of a... It's not laid out right for my brain. But Imperiax takes the match. So now we have Kanga up against Yenyu. Which, I feel like this is going to go in favor of Kanga. They're, they're very similar styles of ship, but Kanga has the HP advantage. And 9 out of 10 times that wins matches. As the scoreboard seems to reflect pretty well. Yenyu holding on a lot better than the second round, but I do think it's still going to go in favor of Kanga's ship. HP wins fights, ladies and gentlemen. HP wins fights. And Kanga wins the match. So next up we have Kanga up against Imperia X. This, I think, might be pretty hard for Kanga's fleet. It, it has mostly burst lasers with only a couple of torpedoes. It might be able to make progress eventually, but I think it's going to struggle to dig through all this armor. And Conger goes down. Protein swords, ladies and gentlemen. Protein swords. And this time it appears to just feel like it has no reason to live. 
That, that ejector suit is actually pretty neat though, from Imperiax. Because of the way he's got it stacked, if you break the armor dead center, it looked like it ejected the seat out the or the, the core out the back. Which should help quite a bit actually. I've never built the ejector seat quite like that. Conquer ship appears to have largely repaired itself. Well done pretty well, but I think the point leakage might be a bit much. I don't know if it's going to be able to recover from the gap. And Imperial X takes the match. So now we have Yen Yu up against Imperial X. I think Yen Yu has a better chance here than. Or no, never mind. His ship apparently is brain dead. And this is why I, I don't like relying on behavior to win matches. It's just. You can't trust it. Like, Ginyu does have enough torpedoes to dig through, but it has no reason to be this close to the enemy. Yet here we are. The, the ship does appear to be a bit more respectful now. But, uh... I just don't know that it's going to be able to make up the point gap. If it killed this big ship, then it probably would be just fine. But that is a lot to dig through, and you can see that in between salvos, it's repairing itself. It does not bode well for Yenyu. And yeah, the, the cost difference is a big part of the behavior. If a ship is facing a... An enemy that is significantly cheaper than itself, it always tries to close, close in the point blank to fight it. Which is a little silly, but it's it comes from the fact that the AI was re really developed for the campaign, not for tournaments. So it's not expecting to fight a variety of ships, it's expecting to fight one or two. And in most campaign conditions, a large or an expensive ship can pretty easily just breeze through a cheap one. Yeah, uh, well, in the beta version, one of the changes that's being made is that point defense weapons will no longer factor into the AI's weapon DPS calculations, and that alone dramatically improves behavior.
and Imperiax wins round one. I suspect round two is going to go about the same. Um, Yin Yu is much better at punching through the larger targets, but he's also much more fragile, so if anything goes wrong, then he just gets floored. And these little laser guys are only like 80 p, so killing them isn't that big of a deal. And yeah, throw up. And yeah, Owl Feathers has been working on an AI, but I didn't want to throw him under the bus. And so another one of the bigger advantage of um, using containers as opposed to a regular hull armor is that they have lower density, but their hit points per mass is the same. So you get less hit points per area, but the same amount of mass or hit points per mass. But you don't need more thrusters, and it ends up building a larger ship. And larger ships tend to be more resistant to splash damage. And if you're using factories, the Terran factory is the same shape as the cargo container and the same size as the largest cargo container. Plus, the it, because they all hold resources, it means your ship has a vast capacity for storing stuff that you can then use to build ships later. Uh, as for how many torpedoes, I think Imperiax's big ship has 10-ish, maybe 12. And Imperiax wins the match. Which, yep, that means Imperiax and Congo will be moving on. So, thank you for joining, and I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.